and it's time to focus in one of the pillars of this festival, circularity. This is interesting and we would like to see uh, how when you start to research about zero waste solutions, you can come in many points as well to circularity. This is a really interesting topic, as I just said, and this is why we'll, we would like today to have a discussion. And for this, we are going to have three different guests from three different circular cities. So they are going to tell us a bit more about their plans and what are these cities doing about. So first, let's welcome our moderator, Aryun. So Aryun, are you here? OK, yes. I can see you here. Let me give you some space into the stage. Let's see. Okay, there I see you. Uh, it seems like it's loading. Hi, are you? How are you doing? I'm good, Coral. How are you doing? Really good. Really excited about this evening. I think it's <laughs> going great. And now we're going to have a really interesting topic. So, well, today we're going to have also Laura, Mark in here. And let me see one of our speakers still missing, but we can start giving access to the rest so you can accommodate. And Marie, I'm receiving that she will be joining soon. So, hello, Laura. Hey. Hi there, Laura. Okay, hey. so. Mark should be appearing soon. Hi. And Marie is here. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. So now I'm going to leave you, Arjun, with the whole panel. So the stage is all yours. Thank you very much, Coral. See you later. See you later. Before we start, uh, I would like to welcome all of our listeners and request them to introduce themselves uh, in the in the chat section so that uh, we could perhaps read their answers and uh, ask them interesting questions later. With those words out of the way, I would like to say good afternoon to you all. My name is Arjun Jamil, and I'm joining you from a very sunny Hamburg today uh, to welcome you to today's panel about zero waste cities and circular solutions. We've all seen the pictures. Plastic littered beaches, rivers overflowing with, ever in, with the ever increasing burden of society's consumption. The waste crisis surrounding our most densely populated cities is an extremely visible issue in our society. Today, more than half the world, three and a half billion people, live in urban scenarios or cities as we define them. And this number is only expected to increase in the future. But in this future, if we keep on going the same paths that we are going on right now, we are bound to run into the limits of our planet and our ecosystem. Of course, being crafty primates, we are ready and already trying to find solutions. Zero waste cities is such a solution, or shall I say concept. The promise, cleaner, healthier, more productive and efficient living spaces for the humans of the future. Talking especially about Europe, Waste prevention is a key priority in the new Green Deal and the new Circular Economy Action Plan. The new CE or Circular Economy Framework tries to shift away from the recycling and into waste prevention methods, a turn of philosophy from just five years ago. Today, for our panel, we have three very special guests who have made it their life's work to make this concept, or shall I say dream, come true. Our first guest, Laura Grotenrath, joining us from an equally sunny Berlin. Laura, who has been working with us uh, with Circular Berlin since 2018, is also the founder of Zero Waste Your Life. A veteran in the industry, Laura has helped Circular Berlin in developing the zero waste concept for Berlin's uh, Friedrichshain Kreuzberg district in 2019. Laura, great to be uh, with you on the panel today. Are you excited for our discussion? Yes, I am. Thank you for having great. me. Yes, no worries. Thank you very much. Um, our next guest uh, is a medical physicist by profession, but a nature lover by heart. He got inspired to donate his free time to help the zero waste vision of the city of Kiel. And just two weeks ago from today, helped create the zero waste uh, concept for the city of Kiel, a vision that Kiel plans to implement in the coming years. 
Please welcome Marc Della, Della Pierre uh, to our virtual stage. Marc, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Hi, yes, yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you for the invitation as well. I would like to come back just to one point. The city of Kiel wrote the concept. We helped the city of Kiel in this sense, but the concept is written by the city together with the Wuppertal Institute. Great, great. Thank you for that information. I'm sure we'll get into all the details uh, very, very soon. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Um, our last guest uh, needs no introduction, at least to me, as uh, she is an old colleague of mine from uh, FORCE, a Horizon 2020 project on circular economy. Uh, she's responsible for international coordination and policy implementation at uh, other sustainability projects at the city of Hamburg. And uh, she's been working with the Senate Chancery uh, for various other sustainability projects since 2017. Please welcome Marie Finke. Marie, how is it going? Pleasure always seeing you again. Um, how are you? Yeah, the pleasure is on my side. Um, thank you for this great introduction, Arjun. And I'm very excited to, uh, to be part of this panel discussion. Great, great. Thank you for joining us. Now that we have all of the introductions out of the way, let's get to the to the meat of the topic here. Um, how would we define a zero waste city uh, for our for our audience for between us in the panel? Let's let's talk about the definition of the concept itself. Mark, uh, please feel free to start. So okay, we have a common definition at uh, zero. So uh, uh, zero waste city is a city committing to go uh, to go zero waste and making steps in this direction. So it means so reducing its uh, the total waste produced per habitant and per year, reducing also the residual waste, and also mm -hmm. encouraging citizens so, uh, to uh, to to change their life and to produce also less uh, less uh, waste. Great, great. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Laura, do you have a take on this? Um, first of all, agreed with Mark. <laughs> um, what I find really important is that um, when we talk about zero waste as well as about the circular economy, it's a lot about collaboration um, and about all the different stakeholders that are involved in producing as well as generate, um, as avoiding waste, um, collaborating and see how we can find solutions and implement solutions together. Thank you also for that answer. Marie, any, any takes on this? I think it's already a very global view of what a zero waste city is. I want to emphasize on the local uh, aspect of a municipality, um, the big waste streams like electric waste or plastic waste, they are mostly processed in, in each municipality. So I think we will come back on this point, but um, the, the the local aspect should not be uh <clears throat> yeah denied forgotten mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right right um so now that we have defined what a zero waste city might be uh let's talk about why is this this transition from a linear to a circular or a wasteful society to a zero waste society important nowadays what has changed in the last 20 years that municipalities are are giving these issues such priority. And I guess, Marie, you would be a very interesting uh, uh, person to answer this question since you work directly with the with the city on this on this aspect. Yes, so um, as we know, big waste streams are, are uh, ending up in the cities. So circular economy um, has to think now all elements of a value chain uh, in a circular way. So starting from design and production um, and um, what we can now, um, what we, where we have possibilities to, um, to have an impact in the cities is for now mostly on the waste management, but circular economy is way more and municipalities have um, the possibility to implement something like micro circular systems mm -hmm. where matchmaking can take place between stakeholders mm -hmm. for product and demand. Um, but the circle has to be thought bigger than that, in my opinion. Yes, uh, I agree with you as well on this topic. We will come, come around to this because I, I find this very interesting. Um, coming to Mark, Mark, you have been working with uh, Zero Waste Kiel uh, since some years and uh, 
I guess this is uh, this this would be a very interesting perspective as well. How have you seen Kiel's priorities change over time uh, since you were there, perhaps for the beginning of this of this change of the vision? What were these defining factors that they wanted to to uh, to achieve? Um, I mean, so the, uh, in, in the case of the city of Kiel, so they were already uh, running a climate uh, climate plan, uh, also involved in a lot of uh, sustainable. Uh, aspects and okay uh, this is why we as association as a non-profit association we encourage them to follow this uh, path of uh, of, uh, of zero waste uh, the thing i would like also to mention is okay i mean uh, the, the reason of uh, why we need this is zero waste city you mentioned it in the introduction the big amount of waste produced and the cities is also a place where we produce waste and here, okay, for the in the last years, we could uh, observe also among the citizens that they more and more uh, see see this issue, and they make themselves also uh, pressure on the cities to address this point. Great answer. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now coming to you, Laura. Uh, I see in your profile uh, not only that you work. Uh, professionally with the theme of sustainability and circular economy, you also are an entrepreneur in that sense. And I guess this has uh, made you particularly sensitive to the to the changes in the ecosystem of sustainability. In that sense, why do you think that zero waste cities are important today? Um, well, I think it's, it's a lot about the way we live these days. Um, speaking about like not not these current days, but um, yeah, this decade maybe or even even a bit before. Um, we live in larger and larger systems, and we act and move around larger and larger systems. And the more and uh, the larger the systems get, the um, the more complex the the issue of making sure resources are used wisely and resourceful, um, and nothing is wasted. Um, becomes. So I think a city or on a smaller scale, a municipality, a district um, can be a really, really good chance to get yeah, to get started to, to make this really complex system mm -hmm. less complex again um, in order to avoid waste and resources being wasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree as well. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Now, I would like to come to our next theme. Speaking of circular economy as a stakeholder, uh, networking framework. So circular economy is supposed to connect all these producers and the people who take uh, the uh, produce in that sense and uh, minimizing the production itself of waste. How can a circular economy, considering that in mind, um, support the zero waste municipality journey? So in terms of finances, for example, in terms of uh, saving uh, resources and money. And I guess, Laura, you could uh, you could be the first one to answer this question. Yeah, it's actually, um, I've recently discussed a similar question with a colleague. Um, the question is, how, do, how are zero waste and circular economy related? Um, and to me, um, taking a zero waste approach is something rather tangible. Um, that an individual, that groups of people, that a district or a city can um, can do, um, whereas this concept of circular economy is even bigger and more complex, and therefore harder to harder to grasp, har harder to figure out what could we do, what could be actual actions. Um, yes, yeah, so I think starting um, considering the topic of zero waste, how can we be mindful with the resources we are using? Um, mm -hmm. be a good start that then should lead us to the next topic or the yeah the evolving topic of circular economy how can we think in systems how can we close resource loops within a complex system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what do you think about this marie i mean i totally agree with uh with laura um circular economy and as well as zero waste are um are very difficult to define because it's too vague so what we can do and um i can uh, tell something about the projects i'm working in we can um choose for example a waste stream we can choose a type of stakeholders we want to work with or a district in a city and there we can start implementing small 
apparently small solutions, but that can be replicated. And this is where also international work is very important because we can also learn from other cities. I mean, national or international, but we can, we have to get out of our city bubble and, and look in, into other cities uh, that have also implemented very small solutions, apparently small solutions that we can copy and adapt to our systems. I agree. Knowledge transfer has always been a very key component of uh, any circular economy project that I have worked on till now. Um, and coming to these uh, these city scale solutions, I guess it's the perfect segue to come to Mark now. Mark, what do you think? Uh, how can the circular economy framework benefit a city in that sense? Um, I think that uh, circular economy is a component of a zero waste vision. So uh, a zero waste city addresses all the ste steps of the zero waste uh, of the waste hierarchy as we know it from uh, from the European law and also from the German law. Uh, but it's it's only a part of it. And in a zero waste vision, you you go one step uh, ahead. You also address the consumption modes and uh, and some uh, some other aspects. But mm -hmm. it is absolutely the circular economy for the zero waste vision. Mm -hmm. Great. So now that we're through that, our final introductory question for the rest of the panel is, uh, we all know that zero waste is a key priority now that we have discussed it so far. Um, how do you think, in your personal opinion, zero waste can help with the current problems, ecological problems that we're facing today? Clearly, uh, the reduction of waste would help with pollution, but in your opinion, what are some things that we might not know about uh, zero waste and some interesting ways that uh, that might manifest in our daily lives? Uh, Marie, please go ahead. I'm also thinking again of different of stakeholders and in first, first of all, um, of citizens. Um, zero waste the the goal to have a zero waste um of waste free city or zero waste um strategy in a city can bring together people can also be um can strengthen also communities uh i think also about intergener intergenerational work um about local or neighborhood initiatives so this is also a very social aspect um from my opinion um which maybe sh yeah is not um often um let's say uh it's not getting visible so often Right. Very good point raised. Uh, raised. I, I would love to come back to this as well. The social aspect of uh, circular economy is something that we don't really, uh, or for zero waste, is don't really is not really something that we uh, talk about that often. Mark, what is your take on uh, on some surprising results of uh, zero waste that we might see in the future? I I, I also think that okay, what. Uh... Uh, mentioned is is uh, really important. So this involvement of uh, of citizens uh, who uh, get uh, conscious of uh, of, the, of, the, of these themes. So not only the, the to topics of waste, but then they enlarge also their vision and can address all uh, all other aspects of uh, ecology. This is one, and the second one that you also mentioned it's a possibility to replicate the model uh, developed in cities. I mean, cities are wonderful places to uh, develop new models for invention, which you can, uh, which you can copy uh, to other cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Laura, what is your take on this? I actually think zero waste makes your life um, much easier, um, despite mm -hmm. the complexity. Um, when I started um, this whole zero waste journey that then led me to be involved with Circular Berlin and to start my own business, um, I basically just thought, what can I on a personal basis do um, to have a positive impact, to, to do something against what I was bothered by, which basically was trash laying around everywhere. I like to be mm. specifically in festivals and on beaches. Um, and what I find really cool is that um, for one, everyone, every single person can do something. You always can start somewhere and then just grow um, also in your own, in your own pace. Um, and something I did in the very, very beginning of um, my uh, 
strategy and my business career um, together with Zero Waste um, was to do workshops on the topic of how can individuals become, you know, become zero waste or start their way towards zero waste. And what I always find is that um, we already know most of these solutions, if not all of these solutions, because it's basically the way our parents or our grandparents have done things before. Before the industry told us, oh, you need this and you need that and you need to buy and consume. Um, so I think if we strive towards consuming less and um, wasting less, um, we can not only save the planet, but also do something really good for our mental health by focusing on what really matters, which is not consumption, but time and, you know, people. Great. Also a very good point about uh, circular economy being a journey, being a personal journey that we could all overtake, uh, we could all undertake, and then perhaps uh, that could help us with our uh, psychological issues. Of course, living in a city comes with uh, significant uh, environmental stressors, and this could be a very good way to, uh, to help us uh, relieve some of that stress. Right. So, this brings us to the end of, uh, of our introductory questions. And uh, starting now, we are going to be doing a deep dive into uh, each of your projects, what you've been doing over the last few months, over the last few years. Um, I would like to also invite other speakers that if they uh, have something to add, uh, either just please raise their finger, or if you find a chance to speak, just blurt it out before someone else takes his place. <laughs> and uh, yes, we can start. Um, great. Then starting with Mark. Mark, uh, we talked a lot about uh, your, your initiative uh, for the city of uh, Kiel and also this uh, zero waste vision that uh, you helped uh, in some way creating with the Wuppertal Institute and also with the city. Could you tell us more about zero waste Kiel and what it is and how it is related to the zero waste network uh, considering that some of our audience might not know what the zero waste network is and uh, basically what they are about? Okay, so Zero Waste Kill is a non-profit organization which we created in uh, 2016 and then we joined uh, the network of uh, Zero Waste Europe. And so in uh, 2018, so we were first addressing so topics related to so the Zero Waste lifestyle, but then enlarged uh, this vision to cities, to businesses. And uh, so in 2018, we went to the city and we uh, propose them to, to make this journey, journey to zero waste. Mm -hmm. The fact so that the city is partner city of San Francisco, and uh, San Francisco uh, is maybe the first city worldwide which declared to, uh, to uh, its uh, commitment to follow this uh, zero waste journey. And okay, the resonance was good, and then we continued with this project. Mm -hmm. in the city as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, may I ask, why are these initiatives particularly important now, especially for the city of Kiel? Considering the stakeholders that exist in the uh, city of Kiel, uh, why is this then brought to light, basically? Uh, I mean, for, for the city itself, I think it's, it's uh, something quite logic. I mean, if they mm -hmm. address the topics like climate, or mm -hmm. some other topics related to, uh, for example, to pollution uh, uh, in the sea. I mean, it's a seashore city. Then there's this vision of zero waste completes, uh, close the loops of, uh, of all these uh, sustainable uh, uh, topics. Right, right. Right. Uh, do you have, uh, except for the, the zero waste vision that you actually, you know what, let's talk about the vision a little bit. What do you have in mind? What are some of the, what are some of the, the milestones that you have in the future? What's the first thing that is coming up that is on your table and how does it feel to be, uh, to be, because uh, I read the zero waste networks website and Akil has actually been uh, highlighted pretty, pretty often in that, on that website. So I'm guessing that you are on your way to doing good work. Uh, please tell us what's the what's the experience like. Uh, I mean, for 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 the city of Kiel itself, uh, I think that what is uh, quite really important are the, all the visible uh, actions. For example, that already uh, in events, uh, you already uh, the citizens already feel okay. There are some efforts made in the sense of uh, zero waste in the schools as well. And uh, it's also one of, uh, of the measures that the, uh, that the city will uh, commit to if, uh, if the concept is uh, then voted. 
uh, mm -hmm. it's to create 10 zero waste uh, school until uh, 2035. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, all these visible action have a, a very large impact on uh, on citizen and on the way you deal also with uh, with your waste in your own life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you spoke about schools, I remembered that uh, Laura actually uh, also is recently working with uh, with schools to create the the, the vision uh, of a circular school. Laura, might you have something to add towards Mark's work? or any any comments yes i do um i think it's a brilliant goal to to strive for to have um or zero waste schools um what i find whenever i work with people on the topic of zero waste and um circularity is that education is a really really important aspect of it um you need people to actually understand what it's all about and you also need people to understand not only what it's all about, but what it means for them and how they can become involved. Um, so I think working with, with students, um, especially with the younger generation, um, it's just super, super valuable because even if you can't get their parents, um, by the latest when you're five or six, seven, eight year old standing in front of you and being like, mommy, why are we wasting so much? You have to think about it. Um, I think is quite a cool approach and it's also yeah I think it's also a lot of fun on a personal level <laughs> I very much agree with your uh, with your vision vision Laura thank you thank you for sharing that <laughs> um, since we talked about schools and education and since education is such an important part of bringing up a circular economy for the future generations I would like to connect this dot to forces uh, uh, summer school program, uh, what uh, Marie uh, was uh, in some ways responsible for. Marie, do you have anything to add to Mark's work here? Uh, actually, I have a question for Mark because um, sure. we uh, are also in Hamburg having now a working group to uh, for the construction of new schools. Uh, in a circular way, so circular construction, but for schools. And my question is um, those zero waste schools um, if they are already existing or if uh, newly constructed schools will also be uh, yeah, constructed with a recycling or secondary raw material. This is uh, in first line the existing schools and I mean it's more looking at uh, zero waste in all processes of these schools. Also in, uh, for example, the canteen and so on. But of course, if you build a new school, and you want it to make to make it zero waste, then you also have to look at all the construction aspects and the material you use, and uh, yes, so to, to minimize the, the amount of uh, resource and of bad resources you need. I'm personally actually not an expert in the construction topic, but um, some of my circular Berlin colleagues are currently doing a research project on circular construction. Um, I'm sure they're really happy to to exchange on this. Yes, uh, because I also work in a, a circular construction project right now. So as Arjun said, I'm working in the force project. I think we will come back to that. But I'm also working in the circuit project. It's also Horizon, so EU funded project. And so, yes, uh, Laura, <laughs> uh, let's absolutely connect on this so we can close this break. And um, uh, Arjun, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's always nice to have some networking going on in the middle of the panel. That's uh, that's uh, that's a very Thank good, uh, good result. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so my question was: um, during forces summer school sessions, uh, education was an important part of of bringing circular economy into the limelight for these uh, for the young generation. Uh, would you have any comments for Mark uh, for about his work uh, uh, about education in this in this specific way? Yes, so as you mentioned, we had the summer school in force, but we also did have mm -hmm. <laughs> we also did have um, other other uh, events, uh, educational e events, if you want, or citizen engagement events, like. <laughs> I hear someone talk. Yes, same here. Actually, uh, <laughs> okay. perhaps there's another tab open on your on your window from the back uh, from the green room session. Oh, let me check. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> no, no issues. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, well, so um, we had also this uh, summer of science, for example, where we had also like we have now a panel discussion, but this was last year. So it was still, you know, a physical panel discussion uh, where we also had some critical questions on the project. And this also goes like this is also normal that people um, yeah, are very sus uh, suspicious. Uh, they want to understand why are we working with the waste management company and uh, and or are even frustrated because they feel that there's not enough done, even if we are already doing something and showing it. But of course, um, the, the impression is often that it's going very slowly. And I also see uh, from within the policy side of view, um, that it can be frustrating also for me, even mm -hmm. if I'm mm -hmm. part of this. Um, but yeah, processes take time. And I think European projects like FORCE uh, and Circuit uh, are um, one part of this process. And uh, citizen engagement is a very important part also in this process. I, I completely agree. And uh, I guess this is a very, uh, very uh, good point then to switch over to Laura's work, because uh, I feel like citizen engagement is uh, something that Laura has been undertaking at a personal level, being an entrepreneur. So, uh, Laura, would you like to tell us about your project and uh, in Circular Berlin uh, or Circular, uh, yeah, Circular Berlin and also for, uh, for your uh, Zero Waste Your Life? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I feel like it's Circular Berlin is the better example when speaking about community and citizen engagement. Um, we try to be as open about the work we do um, as possible and to bring together whoever is interested in the topic, no matter if you're an expert or it's your first time hearing about the topic of circular economy, um, and community events like once a month. Um, they used to be in person, they're currently online for obvious reasons. Um, and I think it's just really, really valuable to bring like-minded people, to bring interested, um, engaged people together um, to, to, on the one hand, get a sense of community, a sense of belonging, and to keep the spirits up, I guess you could say. Um, as Marie said, sometimes change takes quite a lot of time and it can get frustrating or tiring, and I think especially when you're in this sort of phase within a project or your personal um, sustainability development, it's super, super helpful to connect with other people, to hear about their successes, to hear about um, how you can support each other and to yeah, to do some networking, some, some support. Um, yeah, and this is actually what I'm also doing um, with, my, with my own business, Zero Waste Your Life. Um, it's a lot about, as I said before, communication and education. Um, I educate people um, in, in, within businesses, within schools, but also individuals on how they can um, yeah, walk the path towards zero waste and secularity. Um, and I also help them communicate about it well to, to speak about the good they're doing, to speak about also their struggles. Um, to find out, um, to find out who, who they could be supported by, because I think it's all about community and support, mm -hmm. um, and to also inspire other people. Um, actually, I st I only started my business initially a couple of years ago, because so many people kept approaching me on a private level. Hey, mm -hmm. Laura, can you tell me how you do this? Can you tell me how you do this? And I was like, well, this might be a business case. <laughs> it was. Well, I'm I'm really glad that uh, that uh, these these opportunities are now coming up uh, for entrepreneurs like yourself uh, to actually bring sustainability into profitability and and allow people to to earn a livelihood from these. Mark, what do you think about the the social aspect, or let's say the 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 personal engagement aspect of uh, of Laura's project? Uh, is there something that you could uh, you could draw some parallels with uh, with your with your project in Kiel? Um, yes, of course, and I like a lot what uh, what what she said uh, uh, about this personal engagement. And I think that it's also something in a zero waste uh, vision when you uh, share it with others. It's a point where you can act. I mean, when you speak about climate or other topics, you have the feeling that it's 
quite abstract, but okay, when you when you speak about waste, you you, you have it already. I mean, it's a, it's something very concrete, and uh, it's I think that's uh, also a good uh, way to to start and. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and what about you, Marie? Do you do you see uh, any connection points here in terms of uh, social engage engagement in your other projects? Are there ways that you're trying to now channel people into communicating more with each other? Uh, I want to go back also to a point uh, that Mark raised. So mm -hmm. uh, the personal um, uh, room we have all to change something in our behavior. Um, in, in, it is important that this room is also, or that these possibilities are also supported by policy regulations, that policy uh, gives more opportunities for people that, that are aware and that want to change something uh, to do so, so that policy has to make it easier for people um, to, for example, bring um, old electric electronic devices. So this is an example from the Frost project, not to a uh, waste management um, company, but to the next container down the street and that they can put a sticker on it, whether it's still working or totally broken so that the waste management company has the possibility to test this device and to put it for sale again in a second hand store. So those types of very practical solutions have to be um, seen and discovered by politicians and also to mm -hmm. be implemented without thinking so much of all the small regulations um, that might hinder this or that. I agree. I think uh, Germany has uh, has a lot of uh, uh, small moving parts in terms of legalities. Might you have anything else to anything to say, Mark, about this? Of course, so of course, we have the European regulation, which will be transposed in the German one, and then it goes to the to the lender in uh, in Germany. But also, you have in the city it's, the city itself has also possibilities to uh, to to write some new uh, some new policy policies, especially regarding its uh, its waste, or for example regarding all areas which depend on the city. I mean, when when a city when you organize an event uh, in a public place, then you can have some requirement from the city to uh, to reduce the waste in this uh, in these areas. And I think that it's really important that the city use this uh, this possibility to, uh, to to act in this sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed. Well, this brings us again to 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 Marie. Marie, uh, what about your projects and social engagement? How uh, are those projects now trying to push people together to work together on the vision of a zero waste city or circular economy and or Yes, so for example, in the project, we were in contact with the so-called repair cafes. Mm -hmm. So these are citizen initiatives uh, that um, propose that you come and bring your old electric or electronic device that is broken and you repair it together with their knowledge and they provide uh, maybe the instruments for, uh, for the repairing. So this is one of the initiatives we're working with and um, and we had a lot of new information from this work because uh, those stakeholders from the repair cafes, they told us, yes, you know, for us, it's very difficult to get to small pieces um, that we need to repair those electric devices because, um, you know, some are very old, so we don't find the fitting pieces on the market and we are not allowed to go and have a look on the waste management uh, company. What is, you know, on their area is, uh, of course, due to uh, security reasons, mm -hmm. uh, closed for public. But um, yeah, this is something, for example, we we have learned and we didn't know before that there was this problem. Uh, and so we are trying to discover those type of very small but very practical problems and uh, try to then enter in discussion with the policy stakeholders from the Authority for Environment and to see how we can change things on a very local um, area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. I agree. Well, thank you for that response. I would like to take a few seconds to address the audience right now. Uh, we are in the last 10 minutes of our panel. And uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask our panelists, I request you to put them in the chat so that we can uh, we can ask them at the end of the panel. Um, going forward, uh, Marie, uh, now that we are uh, on on uh, the final panelist for today. Let's do a small deep dive in in force. Um, I'm already aware of the of the many details of this project, but in a nutshell, would you like to explain to our panelists and also to our audience what force is and um, how it connects to the other uh, circular economy slash zero waste uh, projects and objectives of Hamburg? Yes. So force is a EU funded project from the so called. 2020 program it uh, will come to an end in the end of this year slash beginning of next year so it has already run for four years now this is the normal duration of eu projects four to five years and so it is totally eu funded so for example i'm also funded by EU. so my work um, and the first project we have three other um, partner cities copenhagen uh, genoa in italy and lisbon and mm -hmm. each city basically is working on one waste stream. So we are working in Hamburg on electric and electronic devices, trying to uh, find better ways for recycling and reusing. Mm -hmm. And then we have Copenhagen working on plastics and Genoa on wood and also Lisbon on uh, bio waste. And so the goal is that we exchange those project results from the small uh, waste streams and that we uh, yeah, to, to make transferable business cases out of out of our researches. Right, and uh, if I may ask, um, in these four years, we have had multiple results uh, that are very very exciting. Could you give us three of the ones that you find the most interesting about, and then we could perhaps share them with uh, Laura and Mark and see if they could be in this panel, in the context of this panel, uh, transferred to their cities. Yes, of course. So first of all, as I've already mentioned earlier, we've optimized the collection of electric and electronic devices. So we've put mm -hmm. uh, some containers. Um, uh, so together with the waste management company uh, at different places in Hamburg, um, we have also opened up a new uh, pop up second hand store uh, with uh, emphasize on reselling electric and electronic devices that have been brought to waste management company or in the deposit containers and that are still usable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one other very important part is also those all those workshops and dialogues that we have um, uh, he held with the different stakeholders from policy, citizens, um, and also other projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comments here, Mark? I think that all uh, all these examples so are, can be considered as best practices, and they need to be replicated, so documented and repli uh, get known and replicated by other cities. And uh, that's also the way we consider so the waste uh, city and the way it is considered at the waste Europe. There is a collection of all these best practices, which uh, yeah, and iteratively, okay, we can we have. Uh, more and more, uh, um, uh, yeah, a model which which is uh, always improving. Mm -hmm. okay. And what about? Sorry, I was just gonna gonna say something to it. Um, Go for I, it. it. I think it's super important to not only come up with new solutions or um, rediscover old solutions that have already been there, maybe at one point. Um, but to also be open and be public about it. Oftentimes, especially, um, I've got the impression um, within the business world, like super generally speaking, um, people come up with great results and then it's like, I don't want to talk about it, all mine. Um, but that's what we don't want to do when we're all striving towards zero waste and circular cities. Um, I think it's all about open source, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences. Um, and actually, one of the first things we did um, when developing the zero waste concept of Friedrich St. Kreuzberg was to look at other cities, um, mostly in Europe, but also worldwide, um, best practice examples and see what has worked for other cities, what can we transfer to the district of Friedrich St. Kreuzberg so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
when mm -hmm. someone already figured out something that works quite well that could be implemented easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. Um, right. Um, I think at this point it would be uh, very interesting now to to connect all all three of all three of you to uh, talk about some very key challenges that you've faced in your projects and uh, how you were able to overcome them and uh, perhaps perhaps this could be uh, an example going forward towards the rest of the panelists and hopefully the audience as well that uh, they get, get they could get inspired and take up their own uh, zero waste uh, circular economy initiatives. Uh, Laura, would you like to go first? Um, yeah, well, I actually just spoke about um, about knowledge and um, mm -hmm. informational resources being available. And mm -hmm. it's something that we found out um, when developing the concept was that a lot of data that would have been super helpful for us um, just was really, really hard to get um, because you know, within a district, within cities, there are so many different stakeholders within the um, within the Verwaltung. Administration. Um, thank you, within the administration. <laughs> um, that it was quite, it was quite, it took quite some talking, let's say, let's put it like this, um, to figure out, okay, who can we get this information from and how are we allowed to use them for something that's going to be publicly published? Um, so I think again, um, I think I'm repeating myself here. Um, it's all about collaborating, obviously on the citizen level, but also amongst all the different stakeholders that are involved in, in making the change possible. I agree, I agree. And uh, consider, I also made a bunch of uh, circular economy projects. I, th I think this was one of the key issues that we came across, uh, the, the, uh, the difficulty of getting ideas across administration especially the administration system in germany is is quite the challenge uh mark what do you think about this challenge do you think that there is one bigger than this or <laughs> you agree <laughs> so, so we didn't have this challenge and we had a very good cooperation with uh, with the municipality of Kiel. but mm -hmm. as a small organization so a small non-profit organization we have faced some other challenges and one of it is the time. We have a really, uh, really big enthusiasm to realize things, but we see we are also limited in uh, realizing uh, them. And we are also in a fast uh, changing world. There are also all these best practices uh, that comes from, uh, from uh, everywhere. And simply also to collect ourselves all this information. So this is also a kind of uh, challenge we are facing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to you, finally, Marie, uh, what do you think about uh, freedom of information and uh, and these challenges within working within the city's infrastructure? I definitely agree 100%. <laughs> uh, we have no such thing like zero waste Hamburg, for example, and I think, um, or circular Hamburg, or what all these institutions may be called, and this is is lacking um, because um, the work that Mark could do in Kiel it was also because there was a point where all the information have been gathered and this was um, at uh, zero waste Kiel and um, and we are lacking uh, one central agency or institution or a city department a city an administrative department. And I think the city of Hamburg is now waking up a little bit and uh, trying to implement or to yeah have more focus on this topic uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to centralize the information that we have and to centralize the stakeholders and all mm -hmm. that is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think this consolidation effort is is key to to allowing people to to interact with the city. Um, we are in the final minute of our of our panel. Uh, look how fast, fast the time went. Uh, I would like to put forward some questions that uh, I am seeing in the chats here uh, from the audience. A uh, question from Christina Kola is that uh, she would like to know what is the business model for such circularity projects other than city funding and grants? And I guess uh, since, uh, Marie, you were working directly with business models for circular economy waste streams, you might be uh, a very good person to answer this question. Yes, so there's, uh, for example, one uh, best practice that I didn't mention earlier, 
um, we have designed together with the IT as uh, uh, IT um, how to say company sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a platform uh, which is called uh, cycle uh, mm -hmm. and where you can see as citizen how much your old electric or electronic device is still worth on the market so they will take mm -hmm. uh, the data from ebay uh, and compare to your electric device um, mm -hmm. and and this could indeed um, if more developed uh, and more used uh, be one business model so this mm -hmm. is a very mm -hmm. practical example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, anything to add uh, our entrepreneur in the house laura Grotendart. <laughs> there are actually loads of uh, loads of business models you can you can um you can use to put circularity into practice and i think that would be worth an entire talk um, there's actually mm -hmm. quite some good online resources on this topic out there that's available for free. Um, and if you have any questions afterwards, just drop me a message and I'll let you know mm -hmm. if, you find it, if you can't find it. Great. Um, Mark, do you have anything to add here? Yes, I mean, there are some uh, business models also behind uh, cities. And one of them is, of course, if you reduce your waste, you also reduce your waste management uh, costs. And you can mm -hmm. also create new new jobs. Uh, I cannot detail it uh, now, but uh, I can recommend you to look at the website from Zero West Europe, where they mm -hmm. really detail this topic. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, I have one last question that we should take uh, that I believe that could be very interesting for our discussion. Uh, Caitlin Heflin asks that. Um, what do we think about uh, about uh, having separate waste uh, separate waste processing streams on each and every continent? Uh, some years ago, of course, uh, and even now, currently, the issue uh, always comes keeps coming up about e waste and exporting e waste to underdeveloped nations, and uh, the the recycling facilities needed to process this amount of waste that. Uh, developed nations produce is just not available on this continent. Uh, if we extend this example, it would be the same thing with China and plastic. Since the ban of plastic imports in China, uh, each and every continent basically has had to develop some kind of, uh, of waste processing strategy. What do you think about uh, about the about the future of these uh, these uh, waste streams going forward? Uh, I think, uh, Laura, what do you think about this? Well, I think it, it makes a lot of sense to go local here mm -hmm. um, to see um, to actually see where things come from, what what can be produced locally, and what can be, yeah what can we actually do locally with what we consider waste? How can we turn waste into resources um, to benefit the local economy? Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's a huge problem that not every city, every region has their um, not necessarily their own, but a proper recycling system in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, anything to add here, uh, Marie? Yeah, Laura mentioned it already. Um, we have also to take a very close look to the production side. Uh, I mean, the waste is not coming from nowhere. <laughs> it, it comes mm -hmm. from products that are uh, that are produced already most of the time, not locally, and so the loop i mean it's a global challenge so the the loop must be closed we have to design products in a way that they can uh, be recycled uh, that the pr plastic is not mixed but is uh, is 100% you know um, um, to be separated from other uh, types of uh, material uh, mm -hmm. and this is a the quality uh, topic is a very big issue we still have and we will always have if we are not working uh, with all the all the uh, countries that are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mark uh, before i ask you for your answer i would like to also turn around the discussion a little bit instead of having recycling uh, facilities, perhaps the conversation that we should be having is reducing this waste in the first place since we are at a circular economy conference. Am I, did, I, did I get your feelings right here? Uh, would you like to comment on this? Yes, I mean, and uh, it is also what stays at the top 
of uh, of the waste hierarchy that you uh, that you reduce your waste in the first place. I mean, uh, the waste that you don't do, do, not, do not produce, as you say, will uh, will not uh, will not be a waste. And uh, for this, okay, we have to change our uh, consumption uh, mode to look uh, at uh, some more clever solutions. And this is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a good example of it. I mean, if you simply take the unpackaged uh, shops, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, where you, uh, you not only produce uh, packaging in new materials, but you avoid uh, packaging wherever it is uh, possible to. Great, great. I see uh, people from the backstage, this virtual backstage, are calling us uh, now and saying that it is our time. Um, I would like to thank all of you for your time, uh, for coming here and, uh, and sharing with us your thoughts uh, for, for this wonderful audience and these wonderful questions. Um, I would like to invite the audience to use the chat function and uh, message our panelists, me, the organizers, anyone that you want, uh, with any questions that you might have for us that we couldn't answer in this panel. Um, lastly, I would also like to invite you to, uh, as well as the panelists and the audience, to my upcoming uh, circular economy uh, workshop in around an hour uh, to uh, to to discuss these issues. And I also have a very hidden behind the scenes sneak peek look at. Uh, the bio uh, bio waste waste stream from Lisbon, uh, what it was a part of force that Marie uh, spoke about. So please stay tuned for that, and uh, I guess we can uh, we can say goodbye. Thank you, June. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Ariu, Nora, Mark. Um, Thank you, all of you. Thank you, you for hosting this panel. It has been really interesting, really intense. I think like it has been really insightful to see all the options and all all the ways that we can look at this topic.